Lord, you are holy. And we lift you up and magnify your name. Let's continue to worship the Lord. And we Lord, you're holy.
God, you've been good to us. God, you've been so good. We want to stop right now and say thank you, sir. Go and tell your neighbor, excuse me, I need to tell God thank you. I, I just need to tell God thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. For watching over us, for blessing us, for keeping us, leading us, guiding us, providing for us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sometimes we didn't know where we were going. Thank you. I just want to. I just, I just want to. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to thank you, God. I, I just want to. Excuse me, God. I, I just want to. I just want to. Thank you. Eternal God, our Father. We thank you for this worship experience. Thank you, Father, for watching over us last night. Thank you, Father, for waking us on time this morning. Thank you, Father, for bringing us out to the church house where we can study your word. Now, God, now, God, we long to hear a word from you. Have your way, God, in this place. Somebody needs encouraging this morning. Somebody needs edifying and lifting this morning. And then God, somebody needs converting and convicting this morning. We thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're doing right now. We praise you, God, for what you're about to do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. The church said amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, we find what's called the Palm Sunday story. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. You find verses 9 and 10 on the front of your bulletin. Matthew chapter 21, verse 9 and 10. Since it's on our bulletin and on the screen behind me, tucked in our Bibles, why don't we read it together? Amen. One, two, three, let's read. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? They asked. Hey, Amen. Tell your neighbor, that's enough. You may be seated. From this passage of scripture, I want to preach and teach this morning with this thought in our mind, Jesus rocks. Yeah. Jesus rocks. And let me just add to that, that Jesus will rock your world. Today, we look at the triumphant entry that took place on Palm Sunday, and somebody up in here needs to know that Jesus will rock your world. It has been wisely stated that there are three types of people in this world. Those who make things happen, you know who they are. They are the ones who refuse to sit on the sideline of complacency. And they actively involve themselves. They see themselves as deputized agents of change. This is the first crowd. They attempt to make things happen. They are determined to leave their mark on the world. Yes, but there are three types of people. The first category is those who make things happen. 
Then there's the second category, and the second category is filled with those who watch things happen. They simply sit on the sideline and watch the parade of life go by. They are so caught up in their own little world that they don't involve themselves in what is taking place in life nor in anybody else's world. So you have two categories so far. You have those who make things happen, and secondly, those who watch things happen. And then the final category is the crowd that wakes up wondering what happened. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, the challenge for all of us today is to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves and make up our minds to be in the proper category. Are you going to make things happen? Are you going to watch things happen? Or are you going to wake up after it's all over and wonder what has happened? You got to find the right category because we are privileged and blessed and burdened also to live in an exciting time. One writer said, these are times that try men's souls. And if you're honest with yourself, you know that we are living in a world that is being shaken, living in a world where we are literally being turned upside down and right side up. These are the times that try men's souls and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I am already on your street. And if you're honest with yourself, I'm kicking at your address. Because in recent week, in recent days, your world has been turned upside down. In recent days, it's like you expected this to happen, but the opposite took place. In recent days, you've discovered that life will turn on you and that's why I often remind you, I remind you that you cannot look down your snobbish, persnickety, arrogant nose at somebody today. Because life can flip on you so quick. You can be up today and down tonight, y'all. Is there anybody in this house who would testify? Preacher, you in my kitchen now. Because I am being shaken. Life is shaking me. My world is being turned upside down and I'm toe up from the flow up wondering if I ever be able to get back. Who am I talking to in here? That, 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 that's the kind of season that we're in. The world is being shaken and challenged and stretched tremendously. This is a wake up call for all of us. All of us must care about what is going on in this world. Corey, thank you for running for city council. We, we must proactively get involved because we've been divinely deputized to make a difference in this world. Do, do you not know that all of us have our problems? But you can't step outside of your own little world and, and stop caring about everybody else. Can you still recognize that God has been good to you? I, I need to stop right there, y'all. I, I don't care how jacked up your world is, God has been good to somebody in this house. In fact, for some of y'all, the only reason you're still breathing and alive is because God has kept you. When your world was falling apart, you could have gone crazy with the world. You could have gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But God kept you sane when your world around you was going crazy. God's been good to you in order to be good through you. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Do you not know that one in six Americans live beneath the poverty line? Do you not know that one in six Americans go to bed hungry every night? Do you not know that every weekend between 15 to 25 people are shot dead in Chicago? And these are not police shootings either, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I'm more concerned and outraged about young black men killing other young black men every day like it doesn't matter. Do you not know that one in four in the state of Illinois still don't have health insurance? Yeah, that, that means look, look down your road. Somebody on your road can't afford to get sick tonight and go to the hospital. And now the conservative right wing Congress trying to take away the little health insurance we do have. Do you not know that in our community, 67% of households are headed by females? Do you not know that one in three African-American males between 18 to 30 are in prison 
on parole or on probation and tied up in the criminal justice system? Yes, these are times that try men's soul. But wait just a moment. God is still good. God is still good because this ain't the first time we've been down, y'all. And that's what's going on in this text. Heaven's hero, earth's emancipator, our Lord and liberator, Jesus the Christ, is entering Jerusalem. It's a dangerous thing to do for him because his haters have already set him up just to take him down. The Bible says that it is during the Passover season, and I need to teach that a little bit. It's, it's Passover season when Jesus came from around, Jews came from all around the world in order to commemorate and celebrate their liberation that, that had taken place in the past. So every now and then, y'all, you need a moment to commemorate what God has already done in your life. Every now and then, you ought to push the pause button for the calls and look in your rearview mirror of your life and have a flashback to what God has already done in your life. Now, now I, I don't know about you, but when, when I get down, I don't stay down too long because I just have to do a flashback and remember what God has already done, y'all. I have a flashback, flashback. Through many dangers, tars and snares, I have already, somebody said flashback. Flashback. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Flashback. Down through the years, God has been good to me. Flashback. God, God, God is just good like that. If God has ever blessed you, whenever life tries to take you down, don't stay down. Just look over your shoulder and remember where God has already brought you from. Yeah. What well, God has already seen you through. Yeah. And if God ain't dead, God ain't done, y'all. Yeah. And God is still up to something. Yes, so they're celebrating, they're celebrating, they're commemorating the Passover. Let me go ahead and explain Passover. Passover. Passover, watch this. When God told his people who were slaves down in Egypt that tonight I'm going to do the miraculous thing to set you free. You are enslaved right now, but after tonight, you're going to be set free. Yeah, set free. If you have the doorpost covered with the blood of the lamb, I want you to cover your doorpost with the blood of the lamb. And then if your doorpost is covered, when the death angel comes through, the death angel is checking for blood. The death angel wants to make sure that your doorpost is covered with the blood of the lamb. If your doorpost is covered with the blood of the lamb, the death angel is going to pass over your house and keep on stepping, y'all. Wait, I think I can shout there myself, y'all. Is there anybody here, anybody here who knows that God has some stuff pass over you? Is there anybody here Is there anybody here who went to school with some people who are no longer here? They're either dead or in jail or on drugs or got some kind of disease. It ain't because you are better than them. It's not because you're smarter than them. It's just that you've been covered by the blood of the lamb, child. Some stuff, God just let it pass over you. God let it pass over. Do I have some folks in here? who can shout right there and thank God for what didn't happen to you, that could have happened to you, maybe even should have happened to you. Wait a minute, you don't have to, I'll shout for you. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but God let some stuff pass over me, baby. He let some stuff pass over. Anybody here? Anybody here done enough dumb stuff? Where you really shouldn't be here? Anybody here other than me? been stuck on stupid a few times and you know you shouldn't be in church but God covered you with the blood of the lamb and some stuff just passed over you I feel like preaching this morning the Bible, the Bible says they're in Jerusalem to celebrate and commemorate God doing the impossible in their life they, they pause to look in the rearview mirror of their lives and see what God has already done, how God has already taken care of them. That's why they're gathering in Jerusalem. Now, some scholars believe there could have been up to two million pilgrims here descending on Jerusalem, the holy city. 
And it's during that season, y'all, that Jesus comes into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Now, don't miss this, y'all. Tell somebody he's teaching now. He's teaching now. The text says he told two of his disciples, y'all go ahead of me. And when you get to the village, you'll see a donkey or an ass tied up with a coat. Now, wh what you do is go get the a a donkey. And if the owner asks you, what are you doing? Tell the owner, the Lord needs your a a donkey. <laughs> and if the Lord needs your a donkey, you ought to let him have your a donkey. <laughs> Why y'all looking at me like that? That's what the Bible said. Don't you know that if you let the Lord have it, he will upgrade it? The donkey was just a lowly beast of burden, y'all. But when Jesus rides on, it's upgraded to transportation for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus will upgrade your uh, donkey. Yes, he will. So, 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 so Jesus, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on an ass or a donkey. And then as he rides in, they put their cloaks on the donkey. And the text says they also lay their cloaks on the ground so the donkey can walk on it. And the crowds begin to lift up their, their branches. Now, now, John's gospel says that they are palm branches. Yes, palm branches. They, they lifted up their palm branches and began to say to Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. And the text says that all of a sudden, some folks ask, who is this? Who is this? The Bible says the whole city was stirred up. The whole city was in an uproar. The whole city was shaken. That's the Greek word. The whole city was rocked in the Greek because Jesus had shown up and he will rock your world. I'm about to help somebody now, y'all, because some of y'all, yeah, yeah, some of y'all up in here, up in here, your world has been rocked and it has left you in shock. And on the surface, it looks bad. But the good news is that when Jesus shows up, when your stuff has been shaken, let, let, let me see if I can make it plain. Have you ever been driving along and you come across an area where there's some construction? When construction is on the way, they have to tear up what was and then they have to tear up what was because what was is not worthy of what's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they have to tear up what was and I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is tearing up some stuff that has been because God knows what was ain't worthy of what's coming. And guess what, y'all? Whenever you tear up stuff, it causes, watch this, a little discomfort. It causes a little inconvenience because you can't go the way you used to go because construction is going on that way. You don't have access like you used to have access because construction is going on. And I don't know who this word is for, but some stuff has been torn up in your life. And you've been a little inconvenienced and a whole lot uncomfortable. But child, it's not because God is mad at you. God is doing some construction preparation on you. See that. Let me help you. See that. When, when, when we built this facility, when we built this facility, they, they put a fence up, y'all. They put a fence up. And, and they put these words on the fence. Keep out. No trespassing. All violators will be prosecuted. Because we were building something. We were building something. When you're building something, everybody can't come into your space. Oh, my God. When you're building something, everybody can't come in your space. If, if they are not contributing to the construction, they cannot come into your space. That's why you all not get upset. Because certain people and some people aren't coming around you anymore. They are not contributing to your construction. They're not building on where God is taking you. And here's the shout, y'all. The shout is, whenever construction is going on, as bad as your life may look right now, just recognize that there's a divine architect. There's a master plan and a master planner. And God knows what's best for you. God, so G G G is, G he rides in on this donkey, on this ass. And somebody say, Hosanna, Hosanna, who is this? Let me tell you who he is. Then we can raise up out of here. Hosanna. Who, who is this? Well, Hosanna means that he is a liberator who sets us free. Now, please recognize that you, you don't have to be locked up to be on lockdown. 
I hope you know that you, are, you ain't got to be kidnapped in order to be held captive. I hope you recognize that you don't have to be in prison to be a prisoner. Sometimes we find ourselves locked up because we are internally incarcerated. So they cry, Hosanna, Hosanna. For, for, for a bit of new knowledge, now new teaching this morning, the palms was a symbol of defiance and liberation. The last time the palms had been used in a celebration was two centuries before this. When the Jews had fought the Syrians who had attacked them, they defeated a much bigger and much stronger army in the Syrians. And when the victorious generals returned to Jerusalem, the crowd greeted them with palms. Go on, tell somebody, I didn't know that. And now, two centuries later, y'all, they are oppressed. Jesus rides in and they treat him like the war has already been won. Somebody missed it. I said it too fast. Jesus hadn't fought yet. He hadn't died yet. But they treat him like the battle has already been won, y'all. But you ain't got to wait until you win in order to win. If you know God for yourself, you are already a winner, child. All you got to do is fight. Knowing here it is, the fight is fixed. Yeah, the fight is fixed. Y'all didn't feel it, so let me explain it. Let me admit something. Now, I don't tell everybody my stuff, but I'm going to share it with y'all. Back in the day, yeah, back in the day, I used to watch wrestling. Yeah. I used to watch the WWF. But I found out something, y'all, that messed me up. It jacked me up bad. They were interviewing Hulk Hogan, the Hulkster. Because I was a hulkamaniac. Yeah. And Hulk Hogan had some great fights, y'all. And one day he was fighting Andre the Giant. And Hulk Hogan picked Andre the Giant up and body slammed into the camera. Bang! But you know what? It was fixed. Hulk Hogan said, they, they asked him, are the fights fixed or real? And he tried to dress it up. He said, well... I got to admit this, the fights are for entertainment. And the outcome has already been predetermined. I could not believe that mess. <laughs> that really hurt my feelings at that time. The outcome has been predetermined. Predetermined by who? By whoever is running the show. Whoever is upstairs running the thing has already determined who's going to win, Reverend. That means all you got to do is show up for the fight, stand in there and fight, and no matter how much you get thrown down, no, no matter how much you bleed, if you hang on in there, somebody upstairs has already determined that you're going to win. Come here, somebody. It's time to shout, y'all. When you walk with Jesus... I got news for you. The outcome has already been predetermined. Yes, predetermined. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. It's been predetermined. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And I call the to it. It's been predetermined. Child of God, all you got to do is keep showing up for the fight. Because the outcome has already been determined by somebody upstairs and he is in charge. Let me finish. Who is this? Who is this? They had the nerve. Say, who is this? He is our liberator who sets us free. He is our savior who saves us. Jesus. Oh, oh man, I wish I had time to preach that. His name is Jesus. And really, that's all you need to know. Jesus. Right there Jesus. is Jesus. Jesus. Can I unpack the name of Jesus for you? The name Jesus. Yahshua yes. in Hebrew. Jesus. Jesus Christo Expudio. Jesus. Jesus. His name means Yahweh saves. Yes. Jesus. So every time you holler his name, you aren't just saying a name, you're saying God saves. Every time you say his name, you're saying he's able to save. Well, preacher man, what does save mean? It means rescue from danger. It means deliver you when you're going down. It means heal you when you're broken. So Jesus 
saves. And every now and then, y'all, I don't know about you, but I just love to say his name. Because there's something about his name. Something about that name. His name has healing. His name has freedom. His name has power. I hope you don't mind if I just say his name. Because in the final analysis, y'all, he is the prophet king who came from heaven down to deliver us from the bottom up. He came riding on a donkey. He is a prophet king who came from heaven down to deliver us from the bottom up. He rides in like a king. As a king, he's got this thing, y'all. As a king, he's running this thing, y'all. As a king, he's controlling this thing, y'all. My world may be wrecked right now, but the king is in control. The king knows who I am, and the king knows where I am, and the king knows what I'm dealing with. The king knows, and I tell you, he is in control. Let me give you one illustration, and I got to go, y'all. There's this old man. This old man was a great checker player. The old man was a master checker player. Y'all don't know what checkers are? People came from miles around to see the old man play checkers. As he was growing a little old now, y'all, he was slowing down due to arthritis. Some of y'all know something about that. And this young kid came to play the old man in some checkers. They sat down at the checkerboard and the young kid began to wear the old man out. He was beating him bad. The old man only had a few checkers left on the board. And the young kid had almost all of his men still on the board. The kid looked at the old man and said, sir, I think I got you in a jam. The old man said, yes, I'm in a jam. The kid said, well, why don't you just go ahead and give up? The old man said, well, I'm not giving up just because you got me in a jam. Somebody ought to write that down. I'm not giving up just because I'm in a jam. Because I see that if somehow, if I can get to the kingdom role and get me a king, I'm gonna break out of this jam. Somebody missed it, I said it too fast. The old man said, yes, I don't have much left. And I know it looks like I'm going to lose the game. But you let me get to the kingdom role. Because if I can get to the kingdom role, I'm going to get me a king. And a king can do what ordinary checkers cannot do. Kings, kings. See, kings can long jump. Kings can back jump. Kings can triple jump. Yeah, if I look good, if I look bad, it doesn't matter how I look. If I get to the kingdom's role and get me a king, I'm going to break out of my jam. And somebody came to church this morning, up in here, up in here, you up to your neck in a jam. I got some good news for you. I don't care how bad your jam is. Come on down to the kingdom road. Because right here at the kingdom road, I got a king for you. He's king of kings and lord of lords. And if you hook up with this king, this king will make a way out of no way. This king will raise you when you're feeling down. This king will heal you when you're feeling broken. Is there anybody here who's ever been in a jam? If you meet this king, you can shout Hosanna, Hosanna. That's called a shout out, y'all. Do y'all know what a shout out is? When people call the radio station, they say they want to give a shout out to so and so. Watch me now. You only give a shout out to somebody you know. You only give a shout out to somebody you have a personal relationship with. You only give a shout out to somebody you know for yourself. Y'all calling by his name. I hope you don't mind as I go to my seat that I give my Lord the King 
a shout out. I shout him out because I know him for myself. I shout him out. I got a relationship for myself. I know him. I've tried him. And I hope you don't mind if I just call his name Jesus. Jesus. Hey, hey, Jesus. Mary's baby, Jesus. Rosa Sharon, Jesus. Lily of the Valley, Jesus. Bright morning star, Jesus. Rock in a weary land, Jesus. Shelter in the time of storm, Jesus. Burden bearer, Jesus. Heavy load Sarah, Jesus. Bread for the hungry, Jesus. Water for the thirsty, Jesus. Doctor in a sick room, lawyer in a court room. Friend, when I'm lonely, when I'm all by myself, I call Jesus and he comes to see about me because I am his and he is mine. I got a relationship. I shout him out. I shout him out. I shout him out. And you can too. And you can too. He's so good. He's an instantaneous goal. He's a right now goal. You can shout him out right now. And he will rock your world. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Eternal God, our Father. Thank you, Master. Thank you for being my provider, my peace, my healer, my deliverer, my joy, my everything. Thank you. Now, God, now, God, somebody here wrestling with a decision. Somebody here, Father, needs to cut some folks loose. Somebody here, Lord, needs to walk out. You're doing construction. You want to change their lives. Open hearts. Open minds on today. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to extend an invitation to discipleship. On this Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem, Jesus wants to ride triumphantly into your life. If you're not anchored in a church family where you can serve him and praise him, we'd love to have you as a part of this family. Now, I got to admit, some of us have been walking in here a long time. American Express says membership has privileges. And sooner or later, you got to make it official. You, you just got to step up and come on down. Today could be your day. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. We extend that invitation to you today. The door of the church open. You ought to come today. God walked you up here today with purpose and meaning. Come, let's worship the Lamb of God. Come, on. Come let's worship the Lamb of God. For He is
come today. Everyone. 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 